Hey everyone, I was brainstorming some Excel design ideas and I wanted to share this little one with you and show you how to do it yourself. Surprisingly easy to do this, just a few little tricks that are actually going to be, I think, really useful just in general. When me and Gummy here are going to show you the way. Let's hop right into it. So this whole idea is starting with shapes. Uh, we're going to be leveraging a lot of the layers in Excel. When I say layers, people kind of wonder what the heck I'm talking about. Don't worry, I'm going to show you. So dropping in a circle. I'm going to go no fill for now, solid line, and we're going to set it to white and make it like two point. Two points just make it a little thicker than it normally would be. So how do layers work in Excel? Well, if we click into any shape, we have the ability to right click, bring to front, bring to back, or move forward and back. What's happening here is we have layers every time we create an object. The very furthest layer back is our cell grid, where we're actually putting our data. As we move forward, we have all the new layers that we add in. So as I drop in a shape, I can then go and in this case, insert a text box over it. And I can take that text box, I'm gonna remove the outline around it, and I'm gonna make the background the same color as the background of our sheet. I'm then gonna drop my text in there and get it loosely in the right position. Because the background of this text object is the same color as the background of our sheet, it kind of masks the shape out, so we get this nice little circle with a little cutout section like this. We're just gonna to go to the Insert tab again. We're gonna drop in a few more text boxes here. Just to save time, I'm just gonna copy paste these ones over, but I've shown you how to insert a text box, so you know how to do that. Now for this one here, this is our actual metric. Now we don't want this to just be the metric, we want it to actually be tied to data, right? So when we click into this, we're gonna go up to our formula bar. We're not gonna type any values into the text box. We're just gonna go up to our formula bar, hit equals, find the metric we want and click it, hit enter, and it's gonna put it in there. We're gonna have to reformat our text just because whenever you reset the cell reference, you have to reformat your text, but we've got the metric we want now. And whenever the data updates in the cell, the text box is going to update to match it. Uh, I just dropped in a little line chart trend line for fun here. As a general rule, you want to make sure your charts are labeled and interpretable. This is really more of a design element. But I do want to show you how to make a trend line like this. It's not as hard as you might think. A lot of people just don't realize you can do a trend line because it's not one of the default chart types. So typically you drop a line chart in, it's going to look something like this by default. First thing we're gonna do when our, with our whole chart selected is remove the background. We're then gonna remove our axes. Just click into them and hit delete to remove them. Then we click in here. It looks like we might have some grid lines here, so we're gonna click into our grid lines and delete those. Once that's all clean, we're gonna click into our chart, go to the line, and we're gonna change the color here to white but you also have to change the markers because right now, look, the markers are a different color than the line. So in, in our format pane, we're gonna click over to marker and we are gonna just change our fill color to white and our border color to white. And voila, we got ourselves a nice little trend line. Now I like this, but there's one little thing I wanna do. You see this little subtle uh, gradient in the background here? There's a fun way to do that and it's a great way to learn how to do better gradients in Excel. So I'm gonna give this a gradient fill. Now it's automatically copied the one I used before, but let me show you how I made this. So the gradient includes three stops. A stop is where one color is transitioning to another color. So my first one is my background color, that blue color you see in the background. My second one is a white or a gray that's mostly transparent. So I've set the transparency to like 86%. Now I make this stop, I put it right next to the other one. And what that is gonna do is create a nice clean line. I might have to adjust these to get them in the right position. You know, move it a little farther down. If I move it this way, it's gonna move down a little bit. If I move it this way, it's gonna move up a little bit. Make sure this is set at 90 degrees because that's gonna make it straight up and down. And then on the other side, I've just added one more stop, and this one's the background color again. And what that has done is created that subtle little gradient all across here. So I've got a nice big blue section at the top with a little gradient kind of separating out the data beneath it. And then all we're gonna do to create this kind of one, two, three type thing we have here is select these, select all of our elements, copy and paste it, drag it over, and just adjust all our text. 
One really important skill to have here is using alignment tools. If you're dragging and dropping these in and it just doesn't quite line up, if you click any two elements, hold shift and click one, then, then click another, go to shape format, you have an alignment tool here. So you can align top, middle, bottom, you can distribute things evenly, all that sort of stuff. And as you get things aligned, your whole design is going to look a lot cleaner, a lot more professional. I found most of the time the difference between an amateur looking dashboard and a professional looking one is just a little bit of alignment. So that's it. The basic idea here is really just to encourage you to think about Excel's design features a little more like PowerPoint. You can present things in a very cool, visually engaging way in Excel. You're not stuck just doing a bunch of boring rectangular boxes. There are going to be situations where using a little bit of design is going to go a long way to help you communicate more effectively and keep your audience engaged with the data that you're showing them. If you want this template or any of the other ones, I send them out on a newsletter on my profile. You're welcome to hop on there. It's totally free. I literally just send out templates and tutorials there. Thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. Have a good one.